Ooh. The White House just announced the Air Force's new jet fighter, the F-47. But new might not be the best word to describe this thing. We might have actually known what this would look like for 30 years now at this point. But regardless, sixth generation fighter, that's cool, right? But you may be wondering what exactly it is, what it's supposed to do, and what makes it so much more gooder than the ones we already have flying around. So make sure you like and subscribe, because I'm going to tell you everything we know about it. Or at least, you know, everything I could fit into a normal length video without going insane. We actually know quite a bit about this aircraft, probably more than you think. Despite what uh, some people are saying in the comment section on my videos. And it's not really going to work how any other fighter has really operated in the past. We might even be seeing the resurgence of a long-lost fighter design that never made it off the drawing board, but more on this later. The F-47 is the new official term for this aircraft, but for aviation nerds around the world, it's been known as the NGAD for some time now, or Next Generation Air Dominance. Adding dominance to the name makes me think it should be like a WWE series or monster truck. The NGAD program started back in 2014 and entered developmental stages back in 2018. By 2020, then Air Force Secretary Will Roper even announced that a full-scale demonstrator aircraft had already been flown for significant amounts of time. Plenty of artist renditions have been put out regarding this program over the years, but this one we got recently from the DoD is probably the first real look at what this thing is actually going to look like. It appears the Air Force has been favoring lighter color aircraft recently, which I can only assume is to put an enemy force at ease before turning them into a pile of elemental carbon. Now these artist renditions are purposely not great and only show a small portion of the front for security reasons, not that those matter anymore. But you can even see here how they're using clouds to obscure the possible canards. But this is the internet, and open source information is king. This picture reported on by the war zone shows a satellite image from Area 51. Yes, that Area 51. Towards the south, we see this image right here, what can only be described as an aircraft that is pretty damn close to the rough images we've had regarding the new F-47 over the past few years. The hangar portion appears to be a temporary soft top structure that the US military uses all the time, like these. Just with the outside tan canvas covering not installed for some reason. This could be the F-47, it could be a drone, it could be the Navy's secretive 6th generation fighter, we do not know. But, things start to get interesting when you look at this thing. This thing being a NASA publication dated June of 1995, back when I looked like this. It's titled, Investigation into the Impact of Agility in Conceptual Fighter Design. And what the title lacked in brevity, it made up for in clarity. The purpose of the study and its hundreds of basically incomprehensible pages of paragraphs was to see the sweet spot of stealth and maneuverability based on the role that an aircraft would have. These designs were being drawn out while the F-22 was well underway, and if we make our way down a bit, we find this page and an eerily similar aircraft that, roughly speaking, fits many of the profile aspects of the new F-47. Now this never got built. It never was anything more than a blueprint, possibly up until now. And that's not crazy, because the entire point of the study was to test geometry, not build an entirely new aircraft. However, the results of this paper led to the McDonnell Douglas X-36 testing aircraft used by NASA, which first flew in 1997. The goal was to design a fighter that didn't use a traditional empennage, which is uh, this part on a plane. It's also a new word I learned while writing this script. We had those with the B-2 already, but flying wings are notoriously hard to fly, let alone dogfight in. There's a reason we still have them on the latest aircraft, but the X-36 was a critical step in getting those designs to work in a form factor that could do cool flips and shoot down other planes, not just fly in a straight line and drop a bomb. For the past 10 years or so, it seems that DARPA has been overseeing the test flights of the F-47. And in classic DARPA black magic sorcery, managed to churn out some bleeding edge aircraft. Which is good, because if you look at their YouTube, you'd think that they exclusively just make remote controlled four wheelers now. Now we've all seen some unofficial specs, if you want to call them that. With the president saying, quote, there's never been anything even close to it from speed to maneuverability. And, quote, the most powerful of any jet of its kind ever made. Which, eh, maybe, kinda not. Uh, let me explain. 
The thing is, is that it's actually expected that the F-47 is going to be as fast, if not slightly slower, than aircraft produced in the early 70s, like the F-15 and will have maneuverability that's on par, if not slightly worse, than the aircraft that it's replacing. Is this a case of they just don't make them how they used to anymore? Not quite. We're still pretty far off from getting any kind of official numbers on things like speed, turning radius, and radar cross-sections on the F-47, but what we do have are some ideas as to where those numbers will be. We know that the overall design is going to be a blended wing body. This helps create lift compared to traditional wings and increases the plane's overall efficiency, while also aiding in keeping it stealthy. All designs we've seen so far have lacked any kind of vertical stabilizers, the, uh, the tail bits that point up on the end of airplanes. You know, I kind of think of these things as like eyebrows on a person. You don't realize how important they are to the look of an aircraft until they're gone. But one interesting and slightly unexpected aspect of the design of this aircraft that has set the internet abuzz is the inclusion of these little guys right here, known as canards. These are small control surfaces you see often on Delta Wing designs like the Eurofighter to aid in maneuverability and stability. So far, these have been noticeably absent on American 5th generation aircraft. China was criticized for using them in their 5th generation, J-20, because they increase radar signatures, which defeats the entire purpose of having a stealth plane. But now, reports are coming in that China is making fun of the United States for using canards, so I, I don't really know what to think about them anymore. My DIA handler hasn't told me if I'm supposed to like this plane or not yet, but a little extra control surface never really hurt. When you remove a part of the plane that has the word stabilizer in the name, it's no surprise that the aircraft becomes less stable. We know that the speed has been hinted at to be above Mach 2, or a little over 1500 miles per hour. The F-22 maxes out at Mach 2, and the F-35 at Mach 1.6. But older aircraft like the F-15, for example, were able to hit Mach 2.5, and I would be surprised if the F-47 went above that. But why are we making slower planes? Isn't faster, more, better -er? Not really. See, aircraft design is a zero-sum game, or some zero game, whatever the order of the phrase is. When you design it to be better in one aspect, like speed, you're generally making it worse in another, like maneuverability. For example, the turning radius of the SR-71 was larger than the entire state of Ohio. If the fellows at Boeing decided they wanted the F-47 to go mock shitfire, they'd be sacrificing some other important design aspects. Obviously, you don't want a slow plane, but we really don't need to be making planes as fast as we physically can anymore. Military aircraft during the Cold War pushed the limit of speed as much as they possibly could because they needed to quickly close the gap between themselves and an enemy plane they were intercepting. That was because they had to get into range of whatever weapon systems they were carrying. As the missiles and radars that the planes had got better, the need to be physically closer to your target got less important, and as that decreased, so too did the need to go super duper fast. It's more useful to think of modern fighters, and really just most jets in general, as missile carriers, with the weapons and the sensors they carry being more important than the actual performance of the plane itself. When the F-14 was retired, the real loss wasn't in the aircraft itself and the sex appeal compared to the F-A-18, if I'm being honest. No, the real loss was the AIM-54 Phoenix because of how powerful it was. F-47s will sport some pretty impressive engines, though. And these are the first things that we're going to talk about that really brings this aircraft from the 5th generation into the 6th generation. There was actually an entirely second design campaign nested within the overall NGAD thing, the Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program, or NGAP, which designed the massive engines actually pushing the thing through the sky. The feds haven't released who is going to be selected for this program, but it's currently down to either General Electric's XA-102 or Pratt & Whitney's XA-103. Now, I'm not going to be going super in-depth on the differences between these two. There are people that can do that better than me. But as the name implies, these are adaptive propulsion engines. What is that, you ask, with tears in your eyes and an insatiable thirst for information that is completely useless to your everyday lives? Well, adaptive propulsion engines basically solve one of the biggest trade-offs that jet fighter designers have had to make until now. You can have a plane engine that's optimized for supersonic flight and the benefits of that, or you can have a plane that's optimized for subsonic flight. 
Adaptive propulsion, aka variable cycle engines, can dynamically adjust their airflow to optimize for whatever form of flight they're performing. Meaning, the internal configuration of the engine when it takes off will be different than when it's just cruising and different again if it starts needing to poke targets. The biggest benefit to this isn't necessarily speed or maneuverability, it's range. We know the F-47 is going to have the longest range of any operational fighter we've ever had. With external fuel tanks attached, the F-22 can go a little over 1,850 miles. I think it's going to be safe to assume that this aircraft will have a range somewhere in the high 2000s to low 3000s mile range. Don't uh, quote me on that though, I wasn't even smart enough to be a pilot in the army. They made me walk everywhere and now my back hurts. See, Air Force single seat fighters up until basically the F-35 were designed to fight in Europe. Europe has lots of places you can take off and land from. That means you can sacrifice the range of your aircraft for things like speed and maneuvers that are more designed for air shows than actual dogfighting. The second big thing with range is that you don't have to aerial refuel as much. The whole point of the F-47 is stealth at the cost of quite literally everything else. A KC-135 tanker, and this might come as a shock to you, is about as far away from a stealth aircraft as you can get these days. If you have to hook up your fancy 6th gen fighter to a fuel tanker, you might as well mail a letter to enemy air defenses saying, shoot here please. Longer range equals don't need tanker equals less chance of being exploded. And part of having that longer range simply comes from being able to carry more fuel. If you want to carry more fuel, you need a bigger aircraft, and it's looking like the F-47 is going to be significantly larger than the aircraft it's replacing. Some analysts have stated that it's expected that the F-47 will have a total weight with weapons of 45 metric tons. That's more in line with what the old F-111 Aardvark could carry, I and mean, that wasn't even a fighter, that was literally just a small bomber. But before we get into that, I want to first answer the question. Why build this when we're still upgrading the F-22 and F-35s are still being built? I mean, these are still supposedly the best fighter stealth aircraft things in the world, so what's the point of making them even better if no one can already not touch these things? First of all, China has one, and if China has one, well dagnabbit us Americans need one too. Only half joking with that, but actually it comes down to the F-47's role. That being primarily an air-to-air -air fighter, like the F-22. F-35s can fight other planes, despite what former Civil Air Patrol members and, for some reason, Indian nationalists on the internet want you to believe. But it's a multi-role fighter, meaning it's designed to do a little bit of everything, not just fight other planes. That means that while it's flexible to do a little bit of everything, it's not the best at doing anything. Since its adoption, the F-22 has been the United States' deadliest dedicated plane killer thing if you want to look at it that way. But there's a problem. We don't have a lot of them. Despite the fact that the F-22 still looks like it's from the future, its program began in the 1980s. Like all good things in the 80s, it was designed to take on the Soviets. But as the hammer and sickle lowered, the individual price of the F-22 skyrocketed. With no direct military peer, it was hard to justify the billions of dollars spent on the new aircraft. While originally 750 were to be built, only 187 actually were. And then, we spent 20 years fighting people with a snowflake's chance in hell of taking out even the cheapest jets we had, and there really wasn't a drive to make any more of them. F-22 production ended in 2011, and the factory soon shut down after, meaning no more F-22s realistically have or ever will be built again. No big deal, right? We have a bunch of other cool planes that can shoot down other planes, but then this and this happened, and the US decided it wanted to stay ahead of the game again. The F-47 will be the United States' first 6th generation aircraft. With the F-22 and F-35 being 5th generation, an aircraft like the F-16 and F-15, which are still used in high numbers by the Air Force, being 4th. One of the things that makes the 5th generation aircraft a 5th generation aircraft is the use of stealth. That's kind of their thing, but it means that any 6th generation aircraft like the F-47 will already have stealth, so what is it that makes this different from a 5th generation fighter? Well, probably the biggest thing comes not actually from the aircraft itself, but a pair of drones that will be attached to them. 
Known as CCAs, or Collaborative Combat Aircraft, these are drones that are essentially unmanned planes that fly with the F-47, hence the American designation of these as Loyal Wingman. These are things like the MQ-28 and the XQ-58A, that will essentially be digitally tethered to other manned aircraft. China has their own version of this with the FH-97A that serves the same purpose. These CCAs are arguably more important than the F-47 itself. When the entire NGAD program was on the financial cutting block back in 2024, the plan was to keep going with the CCA program at full speed. Uh, however, there was some debate if they needed to be renamed the Loyal Wing Thems, but I don't see that being brought back on this year's NDAA. Additionally, these wingmen are expected to be used in conjunction with F-35s, not just F-47s. The idea behind CCAs, in general, is that there is just too much stuff to put into a single aircraft. Inside of a CCA, you can put more sensors, missiles, countermeasures, electronic warfare suites, cameras, all the fun things that make planes a terrifying thing to be on the receiving end of. If 5th generation aircraft were basically missile carriers, 6th generation aircraft are basically drone brain mothership things. Each F-47 is slotted to operate with two CCAs, and these will be pushed forward of the actual manned aircraft. Shooting missiles, blowing up mud huts, directing cruise missiles from giant sci-fi carrier planes, that kind of thing. But more importantly, when missiles from bad guys start flying around, they're going to be the ones actually getting shot down, not the F-47. Which is good, because this thing is insanely expensive. Originally, it was expected that the price tag on these would hover around 300 million fat ones. Some recent reports have quoted the possibility that it will be significantly lower, but that leverages that the United States will export a less capable version of the plane to other countries in order to drive cost per units down. But considering the fact that some countries are starting to cancel their F-35 orders, that's a bit of a gamble now. These are expected to be built in Boeing's new multi-billion dollar facility in St. Louis, and despite Boeing being the one churning out F-15EXs, the F-47 is actually the first fighter aircraft they have designed and operationally produced themselves, having only adopted the F-15 from a joint merger. There is still a lot we don't know about the F-47, but we do know some things, but when some things turn into some more things, I will keep you updated. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.